everybody and welcome back to Adobe Illustrator for Cartographers. I'm Dr. Heath Robinson and we've just been learning about how to create very sophisticated point symbols by using vector art methodologies to create uh, some very interesting looking point symbols for our maps that just cannot be done in analytical GIS software packages. Now we need to cover a very important topic about consistency of our point symbols. Just as we have been over saving swatches for our colors and creating brushes for our lines, we need to think about what we need to do in order to make sure that all of our point symbology is completely consistent across our map across different maps and across different maps produced by different cartographers. Of course, on one level, if this is just my map, you saw me go ahead and create some of these different basic, basic points right here. If I need two of this capital, maybe I've got two countries in this particular map and I need two countries, sure, I can just select it and say Control C and then uh, paste and then have another one. And that's what you want to do. You certainly don't want to try to draw another one of these symbols over here with this uh, tower. If I copy it and I paste it, okay, great. Now I've got a very consistent tower to put down here. And this is fantastic. That way I don't have to worry about the symbol for a castle or a symbol for a capital being different. But there's even a better way to do this than uh, just copying and pasting. And I, so I want to draw your attention to the Symbols tab, okay, right here. And when you open up the Symbols tab, you'll probably see a number of different things. You may not see all of these. You'll probably see this top line. And this symbol is just a fantastic way to be able to grab something and then drag it out and put it on your map. This is some of the defaults uh, that are saved automatically inside Illustrator. Again, you can go online and download all kinds of symbols, some of them free, some of them paid, in order to use in your map or your vector artwork in general. So here is this particular ink splatter, and then we've got over here different symbols as just examples. So if you're trying to do something and you need this particular uh, button or this particular splatter, you can have as many of them as you want exactly the same on your map just by using symbols. If you notice down here, I do have some that look like they're cartographic symbols. Look, city right there, interstate highway, US highway, hospital, airport. Adobe Illustrator actually comes preloaded with some of these symbols for your benefit and for your use. Some of these are very standard cartographic symbols and as we know or as you will learn as we progress in the theory of cartography, making sure that symbology is standardized and so forth is very important. If you don't see those symbols, and you probably won't if you're firing up Illustrator for the first time, if you go down here Look at Symbol Libraries menu. There are a few more symbols that Adobe Illustrator comes loaded with than just the top row here. So if you go down here and go to your Symbols Libraries, it will give you a list of several different libraries of symbols that uh, you're available to use. Here are different kinds of arrows. So there's no need to reinvent the wheel. If you see one that you like, uh, you can use it on your map or in your art, although be aware these are default sorts of symbols. So everybody who uses Adobe Illustrator has access to them, so they might not be quite as unique as you want them to be. If you go down here and look at maps, there are a small number of symbols that are preloaded for maps. And you'll notice that if I drag one out, like uh, this picnic table over here, that since I've used that symbol and put it over here, it does stick it right here in the quick and easy search. That's why you saw some of the symbols on mine that you probably didn't see on yours, because I'd already played around with some of the symbols that were available. So there is a limited number of symbols that are already available for your maps if you want to get started using, uh, I don't know, parking and handicapped and uh, telephone and so forth. And that way you've got a perfectly consistent little symbol for your maps. What if you want to create your own? Because yes, like I said, these are the default symbols. They're available to use for anybody who opens up Illustrator. And so we don't want to do that. We would much rather use our own symbols. I'm going to try to delete some of these symbols that I put in here. So just like you create brushes for your lines and swatches for your colors, you want to create symbols for all of your 
point symbols for your maps. How do you do this? It's very easy. I'm going to take this and I'm just going to drag it right over here into my symbology. And I get symbol options and I get all of these different uh, options. I can also, if I want, have this selected and then say new symbol and it will take whatever is selected and create a new symbol from it. Notice I just have a couple of different options here. I've got name capital. And then I've got type here. And I've got two different options under type. I've got movie clip and I've got graphic. You will note that it says down here movie clip and graphic are tags for flash import. There is no difference between these two symbols in Illustrator. Therefore, if all you're doing is drawing two-dimensional maps for export in different publications or magazines or whatever, you can use either one. It doesn't matter. But if you're going to be creating animated maps, we can do that. We're not going to get into it in this lesson, but it's certainly possible that you can start breaking out Adobe Flash, start creating animated and interactive maps, and then what type of symbol uh, this has been saved as will start to matter. So I go ahead and always keep it, this as a movie clip, and you can keep the default registration and say OK. And then it could be possible to animate it much later on if we get much more advanced in later courses. Now I've got it saved over here and anytime oh whoops notice what happened I didn't get the whole symbol I must not have it grouped all together I thought I did I'm going to group those together and then drag over here capital 2 say oh there we go now I got it I didn't have it grouped Maybe it might not be necessary to create a symbol for your little point that's just a little point there, but it might be, especially if it's a very specific size and you're trying to work across a whole series of maps. That way you don't have to remember, oh, was it a tenth of an inch or was it a fifteenth of an inch or whatever in diameter. It'll be loaded into your symbol window and can just be drug out. Certainly with something complex like this tower here, I'm going to make sure that it's completely grouped ungrouped it is grouped okay and then come over here and drag it here call it tower I'm going to leave it as a movie clip and there we go now I can have as many towers as I want likewise I don't want this one on it though that way it can be generic I'm going to make sure that everything is grouped and I believe it is and drag over here and call it uh, Jim okay now I can have as many gems as I want. And that makes it very quick and easy to access a palette of all of the different symbols that are going to be on your map and then replicate them as many times as you want. Once you've created all of these symbols and they are actually inside your symbol palette like that, you can create your own libraries for your particular map, package them up, share them with your friends, share them with other cartographers, and that way if you're working on a project, all of your symbology is perfectly the same. So when you're talking about colors, make sure you're using swatches on your map. When you're talking about line symbols, make sure you're using brushes. When you're talking about point symbols, make sure you're using the actual symbols inside Adobe Illustrator, and it will make your life a heck of a lot easier. All right. So keep going, keep creating some fantastic point symbols, store them as symbols, and get your project ready to go and create some fantastic maps.